My name is Rebecca Sialfan, and I am a Quora top writer as of 2018. Then they discontinued the top writers program and they started a new feature called Spaces near the end of 2018, so it's a pretty new feature. Spaces are basically collaborative blogs. I write for about 100 spaces and I run more than a dozen spaces. I also have fairly eclectic interests. So some of them I'm going to be discussing here. My interests, they include Middle Eastern geopolitics and animal biology and business stuff. So this talk is going to be how you organize a Quora space. And so I'm going to start now. Quora spaces, as I've said, they are collaborative blogs. They're usually about a specific topic and you can ask questions to spaces rather than to Quora at large. Quora at large is normally a question answering site, but then it added the feature of spaces. You can also post original blog posts there. You can link to outside of Quora somewhere and you can share either a post or another piece of Quora content. So there are a few types of content that you can submit to a space. Now, here's one of the more popular spaces that I run. It's about the Middle East and North Africa, anything about the region. And it's actually one of the most popular spaces on Quora. It's got almost 250,000 followers. And it's also got a lot of views and writers and things like that. So a space might have a short description at the top and then there's a column called details and there you go into a longer description of what the space does. Sometimes you'll use the details to have some space rules. A lot of spaces have a more expensive code of more extensive code of conduct Middle East and North Africa is one of the spaces that has one. And this is only part of this space's space details. There's more there. If you go there, as you can see with the short description, it has a special customizable link for you to go to. And also a list of the people who run it. The people who actually run the space, the people who write for the space, they have the privilege to send content without getting approval from the admins and moderators and the followers of this particular space can read the space content in their Quora feed. Now, this space is kind of different from most spaces because we've turned off the setting of letting people who are not contributors submitting content. This is because we were getting a lot of off topic content and it was taking up a lot of our time. So we invited the people who were sending good stuff as contributors. We invited people from outside to apply as contributors. And we're getting several or a couple of dozen posts to this space every single week. So it's very active. You're getting a lot of information if you subscribe to this space. And it also is high quality content. Quora is a very good community for high quality writers. So another space that might be of more interest to some people in this community, it's newer. It's called monetization of this site. It's about how the Quora platform can monetize and also writers on Quora can monetize. It's another space I run besides Middle East and North Africa. There are spaces about a lot of different topics. If you go to the top right of the slide, search Quora, then you can type in the topic of a space into that bar and you'll see what the spaces of that topic are about and possibly look to join one. So monetization of this site, we have a feed from there. This is some of the most recent posts to it. If you click in the box that says say something, you can write your own and send it in. 
But the most recent post, this one is by me. It's about Quora monetizing and through ads. And this one is by a friend of mine, Alper Sheridan. We both have little headers. And this is a post to another space I have, Unity of Strength, about making it into a nonprofit. So Alper shared that post to this space, monetization of this site. So if you want to write for a space as a contributor, you can click on the people tab of the space. This is what you'll see if you don't write for the space. If you run the space, you see a lot more tabs, but people is one of the tabs you'll see. And if you don't write for the space, you'll see this box. It says, want to be a contributor, apply here. And so you can click on it, type a few sentences in the text field, submit it. And if the people who run the space, they see it and they like you, you're a contributor. So next question, why create a space? Lots of good reasons for creating a space. So one example is, obviously, if you want to run your own interest-based community, Quora tends to have a lot of very strong writers who have got formal and informal credentials in a particular field, a lot of different fields, actually. And spaces are also useful for online learning. You can use spaces if you keep writing for them and reading them to learn in depth about a topic, also to teach other people. And spaces also can be very good credentials in an area to connect to the people in the field, which I'll go into later. So I'll start with my first story about that. Spaces about animals that I have used for several of these purposes. So I really like hyenas. They're actually very interesting animals with very complicated societies, but they do have a bad reputation. So back in April of last year, I started a space about hyenas and it got a lot of views. It's got more than 2,000 followers. And it became a place for the core community that likes hyenas. It got some professional researchers looking at it and even writing for it. So as the community grew and evolved and connected, I started another related space called Carnivore Research, which is about professional level discussions of research on the carnivora, which is the lineage that hyenas are in. Also cats, dogs, bears, seals, sea lions, walruses, weasels, mongooses, raccoons. And there are more than 200 species in the carnivora. So this new space basically was about sharing papers and research talks and things like that, that were relevant even if they weren't directly about the carnivora to our understanding of the carnivora. Both of these are topics that have a group of people writing about them. Hyenas has a group of people writing about them. Carnivore research has a group of people sharing and discussing research papers about not just hyenas, but also about all the other carnivora. So about connecting with professionals. I, there was a crowdfunding of a research project about hyenas eating livestock related to human wildlife conflict. And so I posted about that on the space, gave them a little money. And I wasn't the only person there who also wanted to give them money. Emily Fisher, another hyena fan, also donated. So then we got the attention of the grad student whose project this is, Archon, and he wrote this very nice note about the space. I've also contacted other hyena researchers. I've spoken with them over video conference, and I'm scheduled to connect with another hyena researcher who studies hyena social networks who runs his lab. And so having this space, having so many people writing for it, this is a real credential. Spaces about a topic can get your foot into the door. But you may also 
be able to get these benefits without the hassle of running your own space. Perhaps you just want to write for an existing space, if you like that space, rather than actually running it. And not all spaces take off. So before you create a space, you might want to ask yourself, are there already active spaces that exist in this topic? And that can guide your decisions of how you define the topic and the goals of your space, especially if several people are writing about a related topic. With hyenas and carnivore research, for example, I defined their scope by seeing that multiple people on Quora were writing about this topic. Then when you've got a space idea, you might want to promote it with the community by posting to related spaces, especially ones that are popular about your idea. And then you wait for a discussion, ask people if they want to contribute. Some people might, and some people might have good ideas about what the space could cover, what it could not cover, and what to share. Waiting can help you. Then when you start a space, you could run it as a personal blog. And that can work. The Quora platform does give you a lot of viewership for a personal blog if it's just you writing for and running the space. But the collaborative aspect of the space, I find, is even more gainful. I like to start a space by having a couple of other admins and moderators. And then, especially if you're starting it in a group, you might want to ask people who write about the topic for suggestions about who to invite as contributors. Then, with that advice, you may not be able to access the feature to invite them, but you will if they're either following you or following the space. So you can comment on their answers inviting them, asking them to do these things. So on the right is the people who are currently running the space about hyenas. Originally, it was me and Gary Meany, and I asked him who else writes about hyenas, and he told me about Sarge and Joshua, who have since, after being contributors for a while, become people who run the space. Apropos of formal and informal credential people on the space, Holly is a postdoc studying dog sounds, which is a related topic. Her advisor used to study hyenas. And Simon is a high school student who's one of the most knowledgeable people on the site about animals because he's just very smart. And his favorite animal is meerkats, which are actually, it's, this is fun, they're a relative of hyenas who also have complicated societies. So, one option is that you might also want to invite your followers to follow the space. I get a lot of that, and a lot of these spaces I'm not so interested in. So you might get a lower proportion of good, good followers and a higher number of followers if you do that. I don't do that, but some people do that. There are other ways to get more organic traffic to the space that do tend to work quite well as well. One is take content from it and reshare the content to more popular spaces. For example, there's a new space about Lebanon. And so to drive traffic to the space about Lebanon, you might want to take content from it and share it to the much more popular space about the entire Middle East and North Africa region. That's an example. You can also plug the space in your Quora answers and your comments to other posts and answers on Quora. And if people start submitting content and you like it, you should invite them to be contributors. It's a nice way to say thank you. In my experience, especially for popular and controversial spaces, several posts or the equivalent is about the cutoff for me to see who is likely to be a good contributor. And if they're a really good contributor, you might want to promote them to moderator or admin to help run the space. Now, sometimes things do not work out. If you're sparing and relatively conservative about who you promote, you will not have to do this very often, but sometimes you will need to demote and block people. If you do it too much, it can give your space negative vibes. So I only do it occasionally.
There are other kinds of challenges for running the space, like having a lot of posts to the space that just don't fit. So one thing you might want to do in that case is coordinate with other admins and moderators to discuss the code of conduct for your space. And only on a couple of spaces have I needed to do this when I got too much, but turning off submissions and comments for people who are not contributors. That is a feature on Quora. And another challenge is not enough people who are interested in the space. So you can keep it alive and active by submitting a post or a share weekly, do the other things for promoting the space, keep plugging it. I like to make sure my spaces that I admin have new content weekly. Some people do it daily, but I like weekly. Weekly does work. And another thing is that a relatively quiet space might be all right if your purpose of the space is taking notes for online learning, because then it puts the incentive on you. It gives you more accountability to guide the direction of the space, and it gives you more leeway to guide the direction of the space. So if you're learning about a specific technical topic like network theory, for example, we have a space about that. And it being relatively quiet is actually pretty good for my online learning. I run it. And but if the space really doesn't get a community off the ground, another thing you might want to consider is changing your space's topic. So how might I do it? Post to the space, suggesting a change of topic, wait some time, write to the other admins and moderators discussing it, make sure they're okay with it. And if you change your topic, it can really revitalize a quiet space. And you can already work off of the original following and the original community you have, as opposed to starting from scratch. So here are two spaces that I maintain that have pivoted. One is World of Water. It used to be called Wetlands, but apparently people weren't so interested in it because the following topped off at way less than 100 and it stopped growing. So after a while of this, I wrote to the other admin and I'm like, let's change this to World of Water and let's add posts about the sea to make that on topic. So people were excited about that. Some of the writers were like, yeah, I love to write about the sea. And as soon as I changed the space to world of water, the following started to really pick up. Now it's fast growing. It's got more than 100 fo new followers a week. And it's currently got more than 5,000 followers and more than a dozen posts per week. This space cleanup Twitter, it pivoted not once but twice. The original concept of this space was to bring together members of the New York City technology community, which is a very active topic off Quora on other platforms. But for some reason on Quora, this just wasn't taking off. There was not really a community interested in New York City technology, although there was a real following and a couple of good contributors. So first what I did is tried to change it to technology in the Northeast. And that got a couple more people on it, but still not enough. So the second change was I was looking at spaces and spaces that are about personal identity. This is something that I discussed with the other admins and moderators, personal identity, morality. These are things that really get the attention. So as someone who maintains spaces about the Middle East and North Africa. There are a lot of groups in that region that just get so much hate. So my follower community already had a natural predisposition to be very interested in hate online. And so I changed the space to be a space about cleaning up online hate, bringing together technical people with non-technical people who were more generally interested in online hate. I allow non-technical posts, people who have content about like a newspaper article online about online hate. They can submit that there. 
things like that. The goal is to bring together that community and turn it into a really interdisciplinary data science space focused on online hate. Data science isn't just about the engineering technology. It's also about the philosophical concept. What constitutes hate? What are some incidents of hate? And things like that. So with that new concept, a whole new group of people was able to contribute to the space and revitalize the space. And we're now contacting people who are professionals who work on online hate. There are a number of other things you can do if your space takes off, like pinning an especially important post to the top. Another space that I contain, I mean I maintain, is mythology and folklore. So there was a guy who writes for it who wants to revive Manipuri traditions after one of the kings of Manipur forcibly replaced these with Hinduism. And so the post about the replacement of Manipuri traditions with Hinduism, that's what I decided to pin to the top because it's a real humanitarian and world cultural issue that one of our contributors is interested in. So hopefully we can get attention on this issue. So contacting professionals in the field to collaborate, that you can do for a bunch of spaces. Statistics like these, they don't even have to be this good. They can get a few hundred thousand followers only and a bunch of high quality activity. And if there's something for people to explore, then this can get the attention of the professionals. So here's a case study about a space I maintain. It's called Unity is Strength. And it's also, it's probably one of my most successful spaces with respect to the connections between the members of the community. It's about Israel-Palestine peace. There are not a lot of venues for Israelis to be talking to Palestinians. And this is a topic that people are very passionate about. And there is an existing writer community who is very interested on Quora about this piece. But originally the space was kind of quiet, so I put up this, actually I have number one and I pinned it. I pinned other community events as well and community activities. And so this one, it got a couple of people's attention when I listed them on the post. So this really helped get more people writing for the space who were of high quality. Then writers organically came on and the space now has more than 80 writers, more than a dozen admins and moderate, moderators, and almost a million views. And we do a particularly wide variety of community activities. We have focused discussions of various topics that are covered by the space. Some examples, we've discussed federation. Federation is a proposed solution to the governance of Israel and Palestine of having regional governments under a larger central government. Another focused discussion we've had is about the Israeli elections of which there were four, there, no, there were three in two years and there's gonna be a fourth. And then another thing we do is support and promote related spaces. One space that we have promoted on Unity of Strength is Clean Up Twitter. Another space that we have promoted is there, there's a new space that was created by one of our moderators who is part Lebanese, part Palestinian, about Lebanon. And so we gave it a big plug there. We have chat channels on WhatsApp and Discord. The Discord one is public, so you can go on from the link on the space details. And that's been really good for the building of our community. It's really brought the community a lot closer. We've also had Zoom calls, including talks we've cross-promoted. We have yet to host our own, but we are likely to do this. And we've encouraged community members to attend others' talks. We've also had some members of our community give talks posted by real NGOs in the area of Israel-Palestine. We've had petitions, we've had fundraisers, and one of our ongoing projects is building out our own web domain. We've had multiple people really enthusiastic about actually building out the domain 
So that is exciting. It is a work in progress. Another one of our activities is writing collaborations between multiple writers that have gotten published elsewhere. So this article, which I wrote with one of our moderators, who is the co-chair of the NGO, the Federation Movement. The Federation Movement believes in dividing Israel and Palestine into regional governments under a larger central government. Their proposed map looks like this. Uh, the cantons, which are the districts with regional government. So the article is about how the annexation is going to happen. Okay, so this is a little bit of an obscure topic. You may not know about this, but you might want to look at the article. And we got it published in the medium publication Dialogue and Discourse. And it was featured there, not only by the publication Dialogue and Discourse, but also by the entire site of Medium. We also got it published in Levant X, which is an online resource about the Levant. And Levant X has a real editor with a real editorial process and all that. In addition, some of our fundraisers, this one for an NGO called Roots, raised almost $600. And this occurred about a year ago. So within the year, they sent an intern to write for us. They were very impressed with what we had done. And the co-founder, Hanan Schlesinger, told us about and was one of our recommenders for an external grant that we received. To our knowledge, we are the first core space to get external funding, this was a mini grant, a little bit of money, not a huge amount of money, a little bit of money from sustainable Israeli-Palestinian projects. And another thing we were able to get was we were accepted into a group called the United Religions Initiative as a cooperation circle. The United Religions Initiative, that's a consortium of interfaith and other peace building groups that are all over the world. It includes some of the major NGOs in the area of interfaith and peace building, including Israel-Palestine. So being a URI cooperation circle is also a first for a core space. Now, if you want more information, this is my email address. You can also go to my core profile, and that has a list of all the spaces that I at least write for and also run. And my medium profile is below that. And so one of our new initiatives is we're raising money on Patreon. This is a largely volunteer effort. So the Patreon funds can really go helping support us and support our efforts. One of the new things we have through Patreon is our merch, which you'll see there. So. Do you have any questions, comments, thoughts? So I would really appreciate if you would check out some of these spaces and see them for yourself. Also, what might you be interested in? That's another thing.
Oh, rationality and political discourse. So there are different spaces for different parts of the political spectrum. So if you want mixed space focused on America, depolarizing America is one of the spaces I maintain. I run it with a great admin. And if you're a leftist, you might want to go to the space called left brain. If you're more on the right, you might want to go to a space called war elephant. This is also US politics. There are spaces with that mission for all kinds of regions of political discourse. For Israel, Palestine, probably the best would be unity of strength and Israel, Palestine debate. Both of those are spaces I'm involved in. And another topic that's very popular that I do a little bit of is South Asia. So there are spaces related to South Asia that you might want to look at. And so my account has, my profile has a bunch of links to some of those spaces where you can at least ask the people which spaces are focused on rationality and political discourse for the type of political discourse that you're looking for. Okay, both sides of the US discourse is depolarizing America. That frame. Left brain uh, is one of the ones I don't write for, but depolarizing America, I do. This is an area that's one of the one of the major ones I write about, actually. Oh, Quora versus Facebook groups. I would say Quora tends to have a higher quality of writing. And it has a very strong community. Quora, there's a whole culture where the people, they know each other. They have real credentials. And the discourse on Quora does tend to be more civil and at a higher level. Facebook groups might get more people seeing them. So it really depends. Having both might work. I'm actually considering expanding Unity of Strength to a Facebook group based on some of the feedback that I've got. But the Quora community it's led to, well, with the right spaces, it's led to a lot of enthusiasm. So I'll stay on for a couple of minutes to see if you have any other kinds of questions. And then I hope to see you.
would say art in the title of the space, you have two places, two standard places to put a picture. You can put it as the space icon and you can put it as the space cover photo. So the icon and the cover photo, first of all, you should put them up and you can use them to help set the tone of the space. For my spaces, I've done, I've picked most of the icons and most of the cover photos. So what do you mean by wordsmithing level of art capturing the right concept? Um, the art can help bring people on and set the tone. Having a visual image of the space, it is, to use an analogy, kind of like a brand logo and a brand aesthetic. Some people periodically change the logo and the art for me, I tend to keep it the same. It's one fewer step and keeping the association is probably worth something. And those are my thoughts.